I'm Fabian Fugastella. I'm uh, got into Ethereum by basically following it since since the beginning, since inception. Uh, I find this to be a really interesting project and one of the cryptocurrency projects which felt the most promising at the time. Um, I was working for other startups at the time, so I didn't uh, I had time to really full time like uh, like spend time on cryptocurrency projects. Then there was a successful crowd sale uh, for the Ethereum project, collecting around 80 million dollars, which gave this project money. And then I saw an opportunity: hey, I could work there. But like because it was a rather disorganized or <laughs> decentralized organized crew, it was really hard to find an entry point. But then they actually moved their office to Berlin, where I was based. So I met them at the Bitcoin Center opening Berlin. I talked with Aaron there. Uh, a few months later, I talked to him again. And then the ball got rolling and uh, I started building the applications for Ethereum. Because at, up until this point, there was only the core development. Alex van der Sande, who built, uh, who uh, like conceptualized and worked on, on visuals and ideas of dApps, but had nobody really building that stuff. So I came on board and started building the Ethereum wallet. Um, I also built a Ethereum Whisper a chat client, which is out there, but uh, like a, in, in a better and not really used yet, but might be in the future and the mist browser uh, currently i'm working on web3.js which is the javascript library you use to communicate to your local node as a developer so you don't have to deal with low-level rpc calls blockchain in general it's kind of like a, a god layer it's like a layer of trust a layer of, of some information everybody trusts even the government or corporations or the little people, everybody can trust it in the same way because they know it's completely independent of all of these layers. So it's not like in between there somewhere and you would stack it in the hierarchy lower. It, it's more like above that and completely detached from that because it's cryptographically and all this automatic verification uh, systems because it's proving itself in its own way. Uh, everybody will trust it and everybody can trust it and therefore um, it's like a god layer it's kind of like the, the ultimate truth everybody can trust in this, way, in this sense blockchain technology in general will impact our lives greatly because it will reduce barriers for communication interacting uh, you probably will never f sign out uh, fill out forms anymore in your life because you have a digital identity and as simple as clicking a button or allowing access and you are signed up to a service, they have all the information they need, they have all the verification they need and you don't need to deal with any of this paper um, communication and sending anymore while still being in control and not giving away your control to some external entity who controls your identity. So self-sovereign identity with that all these benefits. Um, you will be easily able to pay for things everywhere. Global currency is the default. So paying everywhere and uh, not caring about whether this is my or their or whatever currency will be the standard. Um, paying for things on the fly in an automated way. For example, uh, paying, and it could even go that crazy that you pay for a traffic light for you to become faster green. So you have like a green, green uh, uh, lane and it costs you a few cents only. But others are more willing to wait so they don't pay that. You can basically pay automatically for everything in micro cents if you want to. And there will be a constant stream of, and flow of money around you with all kind of interactions you do. That will not mean your life is more expensive. It might even be that your life is uh, cheaper, but it will be all real-time and interactive and money will constant flow for things and values being transferred and this will also mean that a lot of people who currently have no way to get money uh, will easier earn money and also the money goes more to the people who actually create the things and not the middle middlemen who will catch currently catches most of it always the biggest hurdles to overcome will be obviously scalability and yeah 
it's mostly like scalability of that technology. But this is like a natural evolvement and evolution of this whole blockchain space. Um, for Ethereum, it's more about how to integrate this with this, with this even more complex system where you have like arbitrary execution. And um, as far as it goes with adoption and, and tools being built and dApps being built, I think this will all follow automatically. So the traction is already there, the traction will continue to grow. It's about providing a solid, a stable and scalable platform in the course of the next years. And that's just a matter of architecturing. So I would like to see uh, improving the EVM opcodes, like adding, like adding things, uh, improving it like technological wise, wise to make it faster, maybe uh, even integrating Martin's uh, WebAssembly ideas or somehow uh, making it more flexible to adopt other systems running on top of Ethereum. Um, obviously, ideally in integrating already scalability efforts or switching to proof of stake, though we have to see how secure it will be, how good it will work. It's still like a research debated topic, but basically improving that architecture Important will be very important will be light clients, being able to interact with Ethereum blockchain without downloading all and everything, but basically having a, a light version of that, but still verifying all the executions yourself. Once this is coming, and, and it is coming, but once this is final, we will see mobile clients and other things popping up pretty fast, I say. The most exciting ones for our next few years will be IoT. So IoT because here you have the problem that you want to automate that and you don't want it to be in the control of one company or one big network. The IBM cloud of IoT or the Microsoft cloud of IoT or the whatever cloud, you want to have it owned either by itself or by the people who control who own the devices. And Ethereum allows that and enables that. What I also hope for is that we will see more off-chain uh, interactions, which use the blockchain only as a settlement layer, but do all things peer-to-peer, -peer because this uh, gives privacy, uh, this gives uh, scalability, and uh, it's basically just as simple as sending receipts around, which is just message passing. Um, but still give you the same kind of certainties you have on the blockchain. And once we see this happening, then you have a lot of things happening around these blockchains and the blockchain is not necessarily the, we do everything there, which would cloak up the system rather pretty easily. But like you have a lot of systems docking onto this existing like main truth chain in a way. And right now, the, the most things you can do is like you can uh, have tokens of all kind of projects. So you can have kind of like ownership or equity of project you think will be big or succeed. So right now it's a really well working investment vehicle. Uh, obviously it works pretty well for crowd sales. C cryptocurrency in general is the absolute ultimate crowd sale uh, tool. Um, a far superior to Kickstarter or any of these because you don't need to sign up, it's a click and you actually own the thing. Even if Kickstarter would go down, you still have your equity. Um, so right now it's, it's more about the tools being built. So there are uh, programming uh, programs and apps coming up. For example, these prediction markets will be a very interesting tool to play with. Um, this. Um, recent flight insurance for example is a rather simple example where you pay in a premium and when your flight is delayed because it automatically gets from the oracle if your flight was delayed the contract will pay you out automatically these kind of things are something you can actually build already today and it's a very useful uh, thing to have and like these simple examples or voting for example or knowing who much puts what at stake for certain things so first I would say um, Ethereum is not like the last word in this whole thing. So Ethereum is like one big step in blockchain evolution and uh, if Ethereum continues to be flexible and growing as it already is, um, it will evolve towards a really way better Ethereum than we see today. Um, 
Right now I don't see any other project coming up to, to really conquer that or to compete with Ethereum. It is the most interesting of all because it gives you the most flexibility. Most research teams in all kinds of projects, banks or industries are using Ethereum because it allows them to do everything and to basically do something with blockchain while having all the freedom to do it the way they want and explore how they could do it. So the advantage obviously is the flexibility. Say uh, if they want to regulate something, they should regulate it on the entry points. Uh, as they already do <laughs> and as it should uh, as it's done in normal banks as well so going through the exchanges and that's already the case actually uh, trying to regulate something which is just a, such a fast moving target makes no sense it's just plain stupid uh, especially if you don't even fully understand the internal workings and they are changing um, treat it as a black box let it be the wild west for a while and once things settle more and one can see, clearly see where the path is going and what are the specific applications then uh, regulation might make sense or may even be obsolete because the technology solves it already. Blockchain, can, blockchain technology can completely eradicate, disrupt greatly any kind of government. So because it is a governance tool, it's the ultimative governance tool. I think governments should wait before these things settle more uh, and, and they're more scalable. Things are settled on certain uh, uh, main public chains or other consortium chains and you actually know what purpose they are and they work and they are used in production and then they can start bringing things like voting, automation of certain uh, bureaucracy processes, um, all kind of like taxation issues all these things can be automated on the blockchain. Identity, any kind of, like, probably they should even create their own chain at some point and uh, to send internal uh, information around between different offices and make such, a, in a way, a, an information flow between these different agencies of government or different departments in uh, more fluid and faster. So, ultimately, they will very strongly adopt all of this technology, but they it will be probably the last one to do so.